we now return to It's Supernatural. Sharon Knott was downloaded when he was in heaven to be sharing what he's going to share with you right now. God knew you would be watching. What is the science of deliverance? This is remarkable. The science of deliverance is bringing what we've known for so long about the Bible and how to administer deliverance and what Jesus modeled. It's bringing that into a fresh new light where science in academia is beginning to now show that the Bible was true all along. Now, it's important that we understand the Bible doesn't need confirmation. And the thing that's so amazing is you have documentation yes. from science, from reputable groups, yes. supporting what you just said. Absolutely. I'm not a scientist. I'm a deliverance minister. But God's given me the ability. I can read scientific documents. I can read medical journals. And we can understand what's happening in the scientific community. And God's given us the ability to partner that finally with what Scripture has known and taught us all along. Now, now either people come to you or they get your CDs uh, for emotional uh, and spiritual type healing. What usually happens with them? They're surprised. So people are fascinated when they come into to our ministry to receive deliverance, spiritual healing, and they walk out with a bonus physical healing. There was one woman we ministered to who, who, during the course of her spiritual deliverance session, she just said, hey, would you mind if you just prayed over me for my back? Almost as if she expected the healing ministry mm -hmm. to be something different and separate. And as we prayed over her, she received healing in her back instantly. And she received her spiritual healing from the demonic oppression over her life as well. And she walked out a completely different person. Well, you know, science and the medical community, you've got an emotional problem, go see a psychiatrist. Right. You've got a physical problem uh, with your bones, go see an orthopedic. But you're saying Jesus didn't need to do that. Nowhere in Scripture do we see Jesus compartmentalize healing. All through Scripture, He would heal the sick and cast out the devils. He would heal the blind man so that the blind man could both see, but he was also set free from the demons in his life. And that's what we see in Scripture. Everywhere Jesus went, it wasn't one or the other. He didn't say this group of healing individuals goes over here and this group who needs demonization right. help goes over here. He dealt with all of them. What does science say about how our DNA reacts to our thoughts? This has to be one of the most incredible revelations that we've seen through science confirming the Bible. The Bible says to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. The word transformed is a literal physical transformation as much as it is a spiritual transformation. And we're seeing in science now where our thoughts change our physical DNA. Let me tell you about a study that was done out of Emory University. Mm -hmm. What this study performed or showed us was that when we took two separate Petri dishes, one dish was put in one space and another dish was put in another space and the group participants in space one was told to think positivity in the presence of the DNA. And in the other location, the group was told to think negativity, hatred, and so on. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the remarkable piece. See, Jesus says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And we saw in the presence of positivity, the DNA would lengthen and become at rest hmm. and peaceful. But in the other room, negativity and hatred at the DNA, the DNA would constrict and bind. And this is a picture of when the scripture said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I get it. That, that, that's an amazing revelation from science. Talk to us briefly about the science of forgiveness. I can tell you like it. I love forgiveness. <laughs> I can tell. I absolutely love forgiveness because forgiveness cracks open the door to healing and allows us to identify exactly where the problems are and where the enemy has come in and established a foothold. 
Stanford University has been conducting a, a study over the last couple of decades that's concluding that forgiveness heals the body, it heals the mind, it heals the heart. So unforgiveness, holding unforgiveness in our bodies will lead to high blood pressure, heart disease, kidney failure, and other problems, sleeping disorders. And the science is showing that when we forgive, those things can be healed. And how much more in the name and power of Jesus. Amen. If science is finding that these, these are laws of the universe, so to speak, yeah. how much more when you have the creator of the universe behind this forgiveness? Amen. Amen. Even, even to the degree where the American Cancer Society prescribes forgiveness therapy for the treatment of cancer now. That's, they're not talking Christian. They're, not. they're just saying to get rid of cancer, forgive. Do they have evidence this has happened? They have evidence. That's, this is why it's prescribed as part of mm. the treatment, because it works. Okay, now real hot button. I'm just sorry we don't have the time to go into detail on all of these things. The science of fear. Yes. The world uses fear to control, to constrict the body of Christ, to constrict the people that Jesus would so desperately want to receive. But fear by itself is detrimental to the body. And did you know the American Journal of Managed Care published an article in which they said... That's a secular, this is a secular scientific organization. organization. And they published an article and they said fear, the general anxiety disorder specifically, which is a derivative of fear, has no good treatments. Hmm. And what's I'm amazed that science would even say that. Absolutely. But this is confirming the Bible. See, Bible says that we're we not to have the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Fear is a spirit. We can't treat a spirit with a physical... An aspirin won't help? Correct. <laughs> we can't give you Tylenol for fear. And so that's why we come in. And we know, we can see the science now. People who are living under chronic fear are living under high levels of cortisol, high blood pressure, sleep problems, kidney problems. But when we can come in and we remove the spirit of fear that's gripped their lives, that's held them under for so long, Jesus sets them free. And they live in freedom and they walk away sleeping normally. They walk away with normal blood pressure. They walk away with a- Do you see this? We see this. Jesus says perfect love drives out all fear. We rely solely on scripture. The science is simply confirming scripture. And when we encounter someone who is bound and gripped by fear, as so many people in our culture are right now, we have the tools and resources to speak to the offending spirit, in this case, fear. And we have the authority and the power that Jesus gave the disciples in Matthew 10, 1, to drive out that spirit of fear and we declare healing, we declare restoration over the body, and we declare healing in abundance. What about the science of renewing one's mind? There's the science. Yeah. What, what do we learn? Yeah, we teach renewing the mind. Again, we, we, you know, we spoke that our right. thoughts absolutely impact every, every cell in our body. Oh, you know, after hearing this, I will never be able to look at renewing your mind in the Bible the same way. When I find out what is going on every time you renew your mind to the Word of God or proclaim scriptures, but go ahead. Think about it this way. So renewing your mind is changing the physical construct of your mind, but every one of the 75 trillion cells in your body. Philippians 4.8 is, is the formula. Scripture says, think on these things. Whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is excellent, whatsoever is admirable, think on these things. And that's how we focus our thoughts into purity. Now, you think this is spectacular, and it is. It's life, it's critical understanding that he brings from heaven. But this next one is the one that'll just blow you out of the water. The science of, it's a word I've never heard of, I have to tell you, uh, epigenetics. What does that mean? Epigenetics is a word that means the, the study of the transfer of generational inheritance along the bloodline. 
It's talking about this. There's a science studying this now. Believe this. There's huh. a study in this now. It's non-biblical, but science is discovering that there are tags. There's markers on our DNA that can be traced back generationally, that were placed there by our ancestors who experienced trauma or maybe opened a doorway to the enemy. And when that trauma occurred in, in our ancestors' lineage, it marked our DNA. And what science is saying is that it now transfers down the generational lineage. This mirrors up with scripture when it says the sins of the fathers will be visited to the third and to the fourth generations. But what we're seeing also is that the study of epigenetics has, has now discovered there are ways to remove those from a medical perspective. I'm talking about renew, removing them from a God perspective, where we speak to the generational curses, we speak to the traumas, and we cause them to be reset at the DNA level, restoring the person back to the perfection God intended. But, but you know, this supernatural forgiveness, this supernatural deliverance, it's not going to take decades and millions of dollars to spend with doctors. It could be as soon as you make up your mind. It's so wonderful. Um, molecular biology held the belief we are our DNA. Nothing we can do, nothing we can do about it. You say, not true. That's right. We have the power of God within us to speak to DNA, to speak to the trauma that's in our DNA and to cause it to be reset and to cause those traumas to fall off and to no longer impact the children of God. When he prays or people listen to his teaching and they pray the prayers after him, uh, give me a shotgun of some of the things that are happening to people. Oh, absolutely. It's my honor. So we've seen individuals who have been cured and healed of cancer. One individual particularly comes to mind where we, uh, we prayed over his uh, cancer of his mouth and the cancer fell off. We prayed over another individual who was in a coma, who couldn't participate in deliverance on her own. We prayed over her generational lineage and the next day she woke up completely healed and fully restored. We prayed over another woman who was experiencing trauma in her stomach, undiagnosed, was unable to, uh, to, to receive freedom from the doctors, and we identified generationally that there were issues in her DNA. We prayed over her generational bloodline. We cast out the curses, and we saw absolute restoration and freedom to her life. The greatest proof will be when you pray prayers, when you sit under this teaching, and you see the same results. That's the bottom line. What about me? But the truth is, hundreds, if not thousands, have been sitting under this teaching and getting set free from things doctors said you can't be set free of. It's in your genes. You can't be. Jared, pray. Oh, it's my honor to pray. And even as I, as I speak into your lives, I'm seeing that there are individuals watching right now who are even identifying the generational trauma that's on your family lineage. And the Lord wants you to say that that's not yours to carry. That's not for you to carry any longer. And I want to speak to you right now that that generational trauma is about to fall off in the name of Jesus. And right now, I thank you, Lord, that everyone watching and listening is fearfully and wonderfully made. I declare over you what God's word says, that you were created in God's likeness, that you were called to represent God's kingdom on this earth. I speak to the demonic entry points in your family lineage right now, and I close them. And I command all traumatic experiences to detach from your genetic code right now in the name of Jesus. I declare over you that you are not the result of your inherited genes, that you are not a flawed person by design. I declare that genetic infirmity is not God's plan for you. I speak truth into your DNA and into your life and into your spirit. You were created in the image of God. You were fearfully and wonderfully made for a purpose. I speak healing to your genetic code right now. I command all genetic infirmity to be removed instantly. I command all marks on your DNA that have attached themselves anywhere in your family lineage to the 10th generation generation and beyond to be removed and to leave your body now. And God, it is written 
that when we ask you for healing, we will receive. Therefore, I ask you, Lord, for a complete and thorough reset of their entire genetic code, returning them to the perfection that you intended at their creation. And now, Lord, I declare over them, Proverbs 17, 22, that a cheerful heart is good medicine. And I bless you now, each and every one of you, with an abundant spirit of joy that brings healing and restoration. Amen. I want to tell you that no matter how many generations of trauma are in your life, trauma from abuse, trauma from pornography, trauma from alcoholism, trauma from infirmity, it stops with you. It is finished. <laughs>